If you guys are new to spearfishing and don't know what gear you need, this video is for you. These are my essentials for spearfishing. Hey guys, I'm Andrew, and today I want to talk about all the essential gear that you're going to need to start spearfishing. So let's get right into it. Now, in my opinion, the most important thing that you're going to need is going to be your mask and your snorkel. Now, you need a mask that fits your face. If it doesn't fit you well, water is going to leak into your mask and you're not going to be able to see as you're diving. This is why we have to try on a bunch of different masks to see if it's actually going to fit our face. Now, the easiest way to do that is to go into your local dive shop and try on every single mask that they have and see what works for you. We cannot buy masks online. Guys, trust me, I've bought like four or five masks online and none of them ever fit. It just doesn't work. You have to go to a shop and try them on, to see if it's actually gonna fit your face. And for snorkels, we just keep it really simple. All you need is a really simple J snorkel. We don't need a perch valve or a splash guard at the top. Just a really nice, soft and flexible one is all you need. Now I'm gonna give you guys a quick tip to make sure that your mask never fogs up. Now all you gotta do is grab your lighter and burn the inside of the glass of the lens. Now what this does is it removes that silicone layer that's left over from the manufacturing process that can make your mask fog up. And from there, all you gotta do is wash it out with some soap and water. And if you wanna go a step further, just take some toothpaste, put it into the lenses, scrub it around, wash it out, and it should stop your mask from fogging up. And another thing I do before I put my mask on is I just spit into the lenses and I find that works really well and my mask never fogs up. Alternatively, if you don't wanna spin into your mask, you can just spray some anti-fog in there. And the next essential is gonna be your fins. Now, if you're gonna be spearfishing, you need some kind of fin. And it's totally fine if you start off with plastic fins, even if all you have is short fins, it's gonna be better than nothing. But if you really want to get into the sport, you do need some long fins. Now, if you're a beginner, plastic fins will be totally fine. But once you have a little bit more experience, carbons can make a really big difference. And the next essential is going to be your wetsuit. If you haven't watched our video yet on wetsuits, go check that out right now. I'm not going to go too deep into these just because we have another separate video on that. And this is my wetsuit that I use here in Canada. This is probably my fourth or fifth Salvamar wetsuit. I really like them. They keep me nice and warm and I find them pretty comfortable. Now, if you're diving in a warm place and you're just sticking in the shallow water, you can oftentimes get away with just using your rash guard. But as soon as you start going deeper, you're gonna notice that it's gonna get cold really quick and that rash guard's not gonna be enough for you. Also, if you're just wearing a rash guard top and some board shorts, there's nothing that's actually protecting your legs. Now, without that protection, you're more likely to get cuts and scrapes as you're diving and you're not gonna be comfortable laying on the bottom of the reef. In my opinion, it's better to get like a one and a half millimeter closed cell wetsuit just to give you full body protection as opposed to just using a rash guard. Now, if you're diving in a cold place like here in Canada, you absolutely need a wetsuit. We have so many people that come into the store who are just diving with surf wetsuits. Now, if that's all you have, it's better than nothing, but you can't compare it to an actual open cell wetsuit. It's not gonna keep you warm. You're not gonna be relaxed in the water. And if you're not relaxed in the water, you can't dive effectively. And if you're wearing an open cell, you need some type of wetsuit lube. You cannot put something like this on without lube. There's a good chance that you're gonna rip the neoprene and it's just not gonna work. All you gotta do is put something like shampoo or conditioner and water in there, mix it up and slide it right in. And next we've got our gloves and socks. Now, if you're diving in a warm place, you don't necessarily need neoprene socks like these. You can get away with wearing no socks or even just a pair of cotton socks. But if you're diving in a cold place, I think it goes without saying that if you're wearing a seven millimeter wetsuit to stay warm, you're probably gonna need something to keep your feet warm as well. Now, gloves are a really big essential. You do not wanna dive without a good pair of gloves. They're gonna protect your hands and allow you to actually get down into the rocks and reef and be able to hold on to something and have yourself be anchored down there. Even when you're holding fish, you need a good pair of gloves. You can have a really good grip on that fish and not be worried about getting cut by their spines. When I was living and diving in Hawaii, I got a small cut here on my wrist when I wasn't wearing a pair of gloves. I didn't think too much of it, but I ended up getting a blood infection and had a red line running from the cut all the way up my arm and I almost ended up in the ER. So moral of the story guys, get some gloves, protect your hands and don't be stupid like I was. And our next essential is the weight belt. <laughs> Now that weight belt is going to help to offset the positive buoyancy of your wetsuit and help you dive deep. Now I really like these rubber weight belts. I find that they don't slide around like a normal nylon one does and they even compress as you dive down to stay in place. And next we've got the dive computer. Now these are super handy for a couple of reasons. Now your standard free diving watch is going to tell you exactly how long you're underwater for and how deep you are. Now without a dive watch you have no way of knowing exactly how long you've been underwater for and so you're not going to know if you're reaching your limit and you're probably just going to come up as soon as you get contractions. Now this is my personal watch and this is the SEAC driver. Now I really like this one a lot it does everything that i mentioned before and it even tracks how fast you're descending and ascending now a lot of these computers come with usb cables so you can download all your dive logs and track your progress and our next essential is our float 
So typically we use these floats for safety so boats know where you are and even so your buddies know where you are in case you get separated. Now you should always have a float in your group when you're diving. Not everybody needs to have a float, but at least one person should have one just for safety reasons. They'll usually have a shark clip or two on there so that you can attach your stringer and hold your fish on your float as well. And with our float, we also have our float lines. Now we've got different styles of float lines. You just gotta find the one that you like and the one that works for you. And I personally like these vinyl float lines. I just find that they don't tangle up like some braided ones do. And if they do, it's pretty easy to undo that. So with the float line, it's super easy. All you gotta do is attach one end to your float and attach the other end to your gun and you're good to go. And from there, we've got the stringer. Now all this is, is just some monofilament attached to this metal spike. Now that goes through the gill of the fish and it's used to hold your fish. Now you can have this on your belt or your float or whatever works for you. Now personally, I like stringers more than these dive bags just because I find that the dive bags can create a lot of drag which makes it more difficult for you to swim. And for the most obvious piece of spearfishing equipment is our pole spear and spear gun. And if you haven't watched our video about spear guns, go check it out. I go a lot more in depth into it than I'm going to today. But obviously for spearfishing, we need something to actually kill fish with. Now personally, I like using spear guns more. Pole spears can be really fun as well. I just personally cannot hit anything with them, so I don't use them. And with our fish killing devices, we also have the knife. Now you're gonna need one of these to actually kill a fish once you've shot it, but they're also an essential for safety. If you ever get tangled up in some line or something like that, you're gonna need to be able to cut yourself free. Now this is just something that absolutely everybody needs, and you can secure this to your arm or your leg or your belt, whatever you like. And depending on where you live, this may not be an essential, but personally, I really like having a dive bag. Now these really come in handy when you have to hike to your dive spot, and it makes it really easy to carry all of your stuff. Now this is my personal dive bag, and I like it because it has this insulated pouch right here that I can pack with ice, and I can put my fish into there for the hike back to the car. And that's it guys, that's all the essential gear that you're going to need to start spearfishing and get into the sport. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.